What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a pretty inexpensive Ryzen powered PC. Now this is kind of a no frills game now PC. With what we have here, we're actually going to be getting some decent performance for PC gaming and emulation. But later on down the road, since we have enough room in here and a power supply that can support it, we can add a GPU, and the CPU that we're going to be using here definitely has plenty of power to support something like a 1660 or even a 3050 or 3060. Because this setup is going to be powered by the new Ryzen 5 5600G. We've got 6 cores, 12 threads, and integrated Radeon 7 graphics that we can overclock, and I'll show you exactly how I overclock my graphics on my 5600G. And the best part about this system here is you can actually build one today. Parts are readily available. You can get out for around $370 building a setup like this, and you can game today, you can run some high-end emulation on this machine like it sits, but if you need a little more GPU performance down the road, just slap something in it like a 1660 or a GTX 1650. So what we're going to be using here is the Ryzen 5 5600G. Comes with a Wraith Stealth cooler, so we've got that covered. I went with a cheap 512GB Kingston M.2 SSD, and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3600 megahertz. This is the Team Force Dark Z RAM. As for the case, I went with a Rosewell that comes with a 400 watt power supply. These are actually pretty cheap. I've got a link in the description to one on Amazon that's $55. Now this one came with a 400 watt power supply, but the one linked in the description comes with a 500 watt power supply. We've also got two 8-pin PCIe connectors on this power supply, so if you need power for a GPU down the road, it's already covered there. And for the motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte DSH3B450, but I would recommend the B550 because it'll support that 5600G right out of the box. As you can see, no RGB, no fancy water cooling with this one, and that's all because we want to keep the price way down on this machine. Parts are really expensive right now and it's hard to get a GPU. So building a system like this might make sense to a lot of people. So I've already mounted my motherboard in the case, I've got everything wired up, I just need to install my CPU and cooler. And for this build, right now at least, we're not going to do any overclocking on the CPU side of things, so that Wraith Stealth cooler that comes with the 5600G is going to be more than sufficient. We're definitely going to overclock the built-in iGPU, but this Wraith Stealth isn't even going to feel it. This is actually a decent cooler at the stock clocks, but once we want to go up to let's say 4.2, 4.3 on all six cores, you will need something a little beefier. And these coolers do come with thermal paste already applied. When it comes to these Ryzen APUs, you definitely want to get the fastest RAM possible. It's going to help out with that integrated graphics performance. And for this, I chose 3600MHz RAM. We've got 16 gigs of it, but we're actually going to be overclocking this to 4000 from the BIOS. Now, the B550 version of this board will support up to 4400MHz, but that stuff's really expensive. You can pick up this exact 16 gigabyte kit for $65 right now. And if you want to go with more or less storage, it's really up to you. I opted for a cheaper Kingston M.2 SSD. Nothing fancy here. It's a 512 gigabyte model. If you want to get out cheaper, you can go with a 256 or even a 2.5 inch drive. But since I have a spot on the board for this M.2, I figured I'd go ahead and use this. I'm almost done with the build here. I just need to get this drive installed and the cooler mounted. And once that's finished up, I'm going to install Windows 10 Pro on this machine. So as you can see, it's a very plain Jane build, and I really wanted to keep it as cheap as possible. This is under $380 to put something like this together right now with that 5600G, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and using one of these cheaper B550 boards. We don't have a ton of storage. Again, we had to keep that cost down, but this is a very functional PC. Okay, so I've installed Windows 10 Pro on that SSD. I've got some games, emulators, and some benchmarks that we're going to be testing out. But with this system here, I do like to do some tweaking on the iGPU and the RAM side of things. I'm using that Gigabyte board, and it's actually really easy to overclock the iGPU on the 5600G. And we're actually going to take this 3600MHz RAM up to 4000MHz. Changing both of these settings will definitely help out with the graphics performance on this 5600G. So now I want to go ahead and jump into the BIOS and show you exactly what I changed for this setup. I just wanted to go over the settings I'm using in the BIOS with this 5600G. Like I mentioned, I did overclock the built-in iGPU. And from advanced frequency settings, first thing I changed here was the GFX clock frequency. It's 1900 megahertz out of the box, but we can take this up to 2300 megahertz really easily. So we're going to go with 2300 megahertz. We do need to give it a little more voltage here. So we're going to go 1.2000. 
And from here, I actually had to go up just a bit on this machine, but you can actually test at 1.2 and go up from there. With this, 1.22500 volts for that iGPU works great with the setup I have here at 2300 megahertz. So we've got the integrated graphics overclocked. Now what we need to do is set our XMP profile for the RAM. This is 3600 megahertz RAM, but as you can see on the initial startup, it's only going to be running at 2400 megahertz. So we need to turn XMP on. We're just going to set it to profile one. That's going to bring it up to that 3600 megahertz. But with this Dark Z RAM, I was actually able to take this up to 4000 megahertz with no other changes. And this does help out with that iGPU. So we're going to go to 4000 megahertz on the RAM. We're at 2300 megahertz on the GPU, and we're going to leave the CPU clock stock like they sit because we have that stock cooler. From here, I'm going to go to save and exit. And from within Windows, it's actually really easy to see if that overclock stuck on the RAM and the GPU. So from our task manager, we're going to go to memory. And if you take a look right here, it'll show you your RAM speed. As you can see, we're sitting at 4000 megahertz now. So we're good on the RAM, but now I want to see if that overclock stuck on that iGPU. I use GPU-Z, and once this is opened up, we can start a GPU render test, and this is just going to stress out that GPU. If we check out sensors, you can see that we are at 2300 megahertz now. So we're up on the RAM and the iGPU, which is definitely going to help out with this Ryzen system. Now it's time to jump into some testing, and first up we have Geekbench 5. We didn't do any overclocking on the CPU side of things, but I still wanted to show this off. Single core, 1490, multi, 7310. Looking really good. Remember, we got that Zen 3 CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads. Next on the list, we have 3D Mark Night Raid with a total score of 17,728. And finally, Firestrike coming in with a pretty strong 4,110. These scores are looking really good for integrated graphics, and the overclock on the GPU, plus that RAM running at 4000 megahertz, definitely helps out. Now that that's out of the way, let's move over to some PC gaming. Here we have Forza Horizon 5, 1080p with a low medium mix, and I have the render scaling set to quality. I was actually really impressed by how well this ran. I did see a dip down to 59, so you would probably want to go down to 900p with this, but it's still pretty impressive seeing this game running so well on an iGPU, especially at that 1080p resolution. Next up, we have GTA 5, 1080p with a high normal mix. We got an average of 72 FPS. Again, Taking that resolution down a bit will help out, but I'd say that this is playable at 1080p with the settings I have going on right now. Going into Injustice 2, I was really hoping we'd get great performance at 1080p, and at all low settings, it does run at a constant 60 at 1080. But I do like taking a couple of these settings up, so I just went back down to 900p. Still looks great here, and it's running at 60. So again, we've got another really playable title on this APU. Doom Eternal, low, 720p, we got an average of 81 FPS. Now, when it comes down to it, you could always take this up to 1080p and turn that resolution scale on, kind of lock it at 60, but uh, low settings is really where it's at with these iGPUs. These Zen 3 APUs are really great for emulation. Here we have Wii using the Dolphin emulator, Vulcan back in, 1440p, really great performance. I mean, as long as the game's compatible with the emulator, you'll be able to play it at 1080p, 1440, and even with some easier to run titles, you can go up to 4K with it, no issues at all. Next up, I wanted to test some original Xbox emulation using CXBX Reloaded. We have DOA3 at 1080p, running great like this, and there's a chance we could go up to 1440 with some of these titles.
And the final emulator I wanted to test was RPCS3 for PS3. We're at 900p, Vulcan back in, awesome performance, but this doesn't mean it's going to run every single PS3 game at full speed. Over on the RPCS3 website, there is a compatibility list, and some of them are listed as unplayable or just in-game. And those are ones that are probably not going to run well on this. But then you get some games that are playable, but do require a lot more CPU performance, like Skate 3 here. So we've got this set at 900p using the Vulcan backend, no overclock on the CPU side of things, and the 5600G can handle this game just fine, but we are pulling around 80 watts with that APU. Not bad at all, and it's totally playable on this system. So when it comes down to it, building a system like this in 2022 might be worth it to a lot of people. Now, with the setup that we have here, we can always add a GPU later on down the road, and I plan on making a video with an RTX 3050 in this exact machine, just to show you what this setup can do later on once you add a GPU. But if you're looking to game now, and you don't mind a no-frills case with no RGB or anything like that, this is a really great option at $370 to $380 right now in 2022. It's kind of hard to beat a setup like this right now with uh, PC part availability, prices, and especially GPU prices. So if you're interested in putting something like this together, links for everything I used in this build are in the description. And if you wanted to spend a little more on this, I mean, you could go with a nicer case. You could even swap out that 5600G for a 5700G and get a bit more out of it on the CPU and GPU side of things. But I opted for that 5600G mainly for the price to keep it as low as possible. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing this thing running with a dedicated GPU, like an RTX 3050 or even a 1660, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.